back to Turbo Garage. So today you're going to be carrying on working on the wife's 2015 Mustang GT and trying to hopefully repair the IMRC on the intake manifold. So in the previous video on this problem, uh, this Mustang was throwing some engine codes, a couple of uh, codes, and uh, it was pointing towards the IMRC failing. I pulled the intake manifold off and just like other 2015 to 17 Mustangs, the shaft had snapped and one bank of the IMRC was not working. Uh, if you're wondering what the IMRC is, if you didn't watch the first video, that's intake manifold runner control. So there are baffles inside the intake manifold that control the runner length depending on your engine RPM and I think throttle position. Uh, and this one, again, uh, like other ones, has failed. So uh, I got a very important piece today, custom piece done, that is hopefully going to solve it. So let's just get right to it. So this is the shaft that broke. I'll see if you can see it. On the camera, I'm not sure if you can. Uh, this is the shaft that broke, and this is a three and a half millimeter shaft. You cannot buy anywhere three and a half millimeter. So what I've got here is some three sixteenths key stock that has been uh, surface ground or machined down to three and a half millimeters. So with this new piece, I'll be able to press this into the intake manifold and attach the mechanism to it and hopefully uh, get this thing back up running. Instead of spending over $400 on a used intake manifold or maybe $300 on a used intake manifold, I'll be able to fix this one. So again, I just want to mention that this is this intake manifold as it is, is scrap. I'm trying to salvage this. So if this doesn't work out again, I was gonna to have to get a new intake manifold anyway. But uh, this is the piece. These The thing is, these were all crimped together this metal came through and it was all peened over the square shaft hang on a sec here it came through about like that it was all swedged on there and you had to basically file it and, and bend it to pry it apart so what i've done is i have cleaned up this face a little bit in my lathe i put a hole in it so that the the shaft will just come through nicely and my plan is i'm going to put the shaft inside the intake manifold and then I'm going to place this together with the actuator so that it's orientated correctly and then I'm going to basically do a couple of little tack welds put my my ground on here and tack it a little bit then I'll have to pull the whole thing out of the intake finish my weld because I can't get this too, too hot you'll end up melting some of the stuff inside here and then once that's welded up and cooled down I should be able to press this back in and that'll be it that'll be it so one thing to note, if you want to tackle this, this surface right here, that is a seal. There's actually a seal inside there. As you can appreciate, there's a vacuum on here, and they don't want to have any air being drawn into this where the shaft goes. There's actually like a lip seal that rides on this. So this is a surface you're going to want to keep pristine. All right, let's try putting this in. It'll require tapping it all the way in here. It is still moving. Oh, we're into the second one. Oh, and that is not quite lined up here. Right there. There we go. That's two. It's gonna be fun pull. My worry is how hard this is gonna be to pull out if it's this tight going in. But what the heck? Keep going. There we go, we're into the last one. You can just see the end of the shaft rotates back and forth. And then you can look inside here. They're all moving. So now it's a matter of hooking up my linkage. All right, so if you look on here, again, this is just slide, this whole thing is just sliding and twists on this shaft because it's not, not a square hole anymore. But this goes on there, and that's hard. Hard to get a view. Hard there, and then when it goes all the way 90 degrees the other way, that back part hits up there. So that is your travel for this thing. So I just a matter of so they're closed, and then when you open them, that is to open. So that means that closed, it has to be in this position. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna, I'll just do it just like this. I'm gonna throw a tack tack weld on the shaft so I say the key stock to the shaft there and then also on this little indexing part or the little lever I guess you could say 
to the shaft. So I got to put a couple of tack welds on there and then I'm gonna have to pull the whole thing out, maybe not all the way, but pull it out enough so that the heat won't transfer through and damage this, but I can pull it out a ways and do my final weld on there. Also, there's, there was a distance, I measured how far this, this key came out, but protruded past, and that's what I've got here. It protruded 935 thousandths of an inch. So once I do get this finally in there and this is in place, I will cut this off at the right with a zip wheel and then I should be able to put my, my actuator on, my sensor, and that should do it. This should technically be fixed. Oh, and other than filling the hole on the other side after uh, I get that, this all done. Okay, so just a couple of tack welds on there. Now you can see when I move this lever, it is opening and closing all of them. So now it's a matter of me putting some vice grips on here, draw this out. I'm gonna pull it out probably about halfway. I'll do it in place. I'm gonna wrap a wet rag around the shaft so the heat doesn't transfer into that plastic. I just do not want to melt that plastic. All right, there you go. It's working, oops, sorry. It's welded. Like I say, it ain't pretty, but it sealed it up good. And now all I gotta do is cut this to the right length and start putting it back together. Okay, so there you go. Cut that off, it's to length. Put a little bit of a bevel on there to help it go into the sensor that'll bolt onto here. But uh, let's put the actuator on now and see how it works. <laughs> Double check this works. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, that is fixed. The next thing to do is to try to uh, seal up this hole again. And I think I'll use the same rubber pe or plastic piece in here and just put a dab of silicone in there, just sort of glue it all together. And that should do it, that should work. Okay, so fast forward a few days. I've got some Felpro gaskets to, or rubber seals, I guess you could say, to replace this. So let's, uh, let's get these installed and then we're gonna work on filling this hole. All right, so the last thing to do before we put this intake manifold on is to fill the hole here which I popped this plastic cap on. I kind of wrecked it, but I'm gonna, I'll just glue the outside or put some silicone around the outside of this, push this in, and then just put a ball of silicone uh, in this end. There's a bit of loose stuff here. I'll just pop this out, just clean this up a bit, but that, that'll seal up with a nice ball of silicone right on there, so. Push this little cap in. Nice thing is if I do end up getting a leak here, it is on the front of the motor so I can I can access it pretty easy. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna leak. So now I'll do is put a, a dab on the front here that is not gonna touch that shaft, hopefully. That ought to do it. So that's obviously gonna set up, but it won't stop me from installing the intake manifold, so that be the next step. Let's put this manifold back on. All right, let's start by taking this tape off. I've already cleaned these surfaces up nice, so that's been done. If you haven't already, make sure your sealing surfaces on your heads are nice and clean. I'm gonna give one little look here. Oh yeah, those are good. One, uh, actually that's three, one more. There we go. All right, those are the connectors on. Now there's a couple of wire harnesses that gotta get pushed on the back. All right, 
let's get our fuel rail bolts in place. That'll help line everything up. All right, let's torque these intake manifold bolts to 177 inch pounds. All right, with those torques, we'll plug in our fuel injectors. And we'll hook up my fuel line before I forget. The last thing I want to do is have that gushing out. Just push it on, push your glue clip in. There you go. All right, I'll fill the throttle body on next. It's easier to uh, do this plug now than uh, later on when it's on. The last couple things to do are these little foam pieces that go on over top of the fuel rail. I remember these were a bit of a bugger getting off. So we'll see how they go on. Oh, that wasn't too bad. And these things slide underneath your coolant line here, over top of that foam piece. Get our engine cover on. All right, let's get our battery hooked up. It is ready to start. However, I'm going to let that silicone set up. So we'll do it tomorrow. It's late in the evening. So let's, let's just call it a day. All right. So next day, let's see if this thing starts up. All right, so there you have it. The intake manifold appears to be fixed. Of course, I don't really know until I take it for a test drive and actually go through the RPM range, see if it throws a code, but I, I can't see why it would because that shaft is fixed. Uh, it operates the butterflies properly. So yeah, I haven't seen anybody else fix one of these on the internet. Uh, might be the first one, who knows? But yeah, it just goes to show why throw your whole intake manifold out and replace it when you can actually fix it for you know fairly cheap to get a machine shop to machine that 3 16 key stock down really won't be that much money maybe a bit of time but uh yeah a lot cheaper than replacing your whole intake manifold of course you're gonna need to have a welder but uh you know if you've got someone handy if you don't have one i'm sure you can get it done but that's pretty much gonna do it for this video thoughts and comments down below i'd like to hear if anybody else has fixed uh one of these problems on their 15 to 17 mustangs but uh yeah thanks a lot for watching and have yourself a great day Ugh. <sighs>